Hey guys, so for this tutorial video we're going to be looking at the mask we made for our Halloween video um, and what it does is it shows the versatility of leather um, as you can see everything on the mask is made out of leather and it's just been painted um, what do you need to make this mask is you need some vegetable tanned leather and you can use a scrap piece uh, as long as it's big enough for the template the other thing you need is you need the template to make the mask. So what I have here is four pieces. I have the, no the nose piece, I have the, the lower jaw, and the two teeth. And what I had to do is I had to create a paper template for those elements. Now the easiest way of going about doing that is taking a piece of paper, normal printer paper, folding it in half and kind of getting the size that you want uh, to make so there's the nose piece basically the top piece there that's that piece over there the teeth and the bottom half of the mask now what i'll go through as well as the tooling and the painting uh, but the first step is to take the, the template and to transfer it onto the to the leather now because i'm going to be painting the leather uh, i'm not too concerned about pencil marks or pen marks on the leather it's going to get a uh, a full paint job so I can kind of draw on the leather without having to worry about what it's going to look like at the end. Now keep in mind if you're going to keep your, your mask natural and you're going to be dyeing it you would try and avoid using a pen or anything that marks a sharpie or whatever. important to remember use a sharp knife uh, I prefer using uh, one of these standing knives gives me more control and also try and cut out the elements uh, apart first before I actually start cutting into them it just makes it easier
All right, so we have our different pieces to the mask. Now, whenever I'm working with leather, um, I'm always trying to make the edges look good. Now, one of the ways that you can is using one of these little tools. I don't know what the technical name for it is, but it's a leather edger. Well, I'm gonna call it a leather edger. It might be called something different in America. And basically what it does is it just removes that sharp little corner I didn't really do a good job with these, so we might come back and fix those. All right, so there we have our, our pieces for the mask. Uh, as you can see, it's already starting to come together. I'll put that on there. And that goes over there. Okay, next is to actually do the tooling, uh, which gives you the texture on the mask. Uh, see over there, I've done some tooling there, all these over there, it's all done with tooling. But before we do the tooling, I want to figure out what it is I want to do. And what is the theme of the mask? Now obviously this is kind of loosely based on samurai uh, face mask. Uh, and for this mask that I'm making now, the the idea is to make it a red and gold theme. I saw a, a cool photo on, on the internet where the teeth were gold and the rest of the mask was all red. But I obviously want to add some texture and, and add some, some details. Um, uh, one of the mistakes I made on the previous mask is not to have it symmetrical. So you can see there and there is not the same. So what I want to try and do uh, on this one is to try and get the tooling as symmetrical as I can so that's what I'm going to do now I'm just going to put in some reference marks maybe create a center line
Okay, so the next step, now that we've got our design sorted out, is to tool the leather. Now, tooling the leather is basically creating uh, patterns and using a knife to actually cut grooves into the leather. Now, before you can actually tool the leather, you have to what's called case the leather. And that's basically a, a nice term for saying you have to wet the leather. Now, uh, for tooling, you don't necessarily want to have it sopping wet. You basically just want it uh, to soak in on the top layer. Now, I prefer using a sponge, but I don't have a sponge at the office with me. So I'm going to be using some paper towel. And it's just normal tap water. What you're trying to achieve is you're trying to get a, an even layer of moisture all over the leather. And you have to do this a couple of times.
All right. Now, what I like to do, uh, and the same when, when I'm doing sheaths, um, I like to add little marks. You can see I've added some there, I've added some there, some there. Just, just a little bit of texture, just to add a bit of flourish. Something I can highlight if I want to at a later stage. And the way I do that is the same way I cut in the grooves. Let's just wet this a little bit more. And this is where your creativity starts coming together, is um, deciding where you want to add those lines, where you think it's going to benefit the, your design, if any. we go all right now in the previous one I added some marks on the teeth and this one I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the, the marks off of them because the teeth are gonna be solid gold so I don't want to interfere with the paint job too much let's put that on there There we go. So now after I've, uh, after you've done this, I would leave the leather to dry. And that just ensures that when you do the shaping of the leather, that the pattern that you've created and the texture that you've created doesn't bleed out or get smoothed out. And I would leave it for a couple of hours. Obviously, if you're in the summer, it'll dry a lot quicker. In the winter, you have to wait a little bit longer. Um, once it's dry, we'll start the shaping. So now they've been dried overnight, you can see the pattern is pretty uh, st stable. You can't rub it out, it's set basically. Uh, next step is to actually mold the leather. So what we're gonna do is we're going to wet it completely and you'll see as soon as you wet it, it becomes more flexible. And then we're gonna wet all, all the parts and then take it to the oven. So with wearing leather, it's become a lot more pliable. And with heating it up in the oven, you can actually set the way the leather is shaped. So let's go do that now. So with this particular mask, um, I start off with the bottom half of it first, uh, get it shaped, and then we can match the top half to the bottom half. Uh, but the first thing we do is we just heat it up slightly. We'll let that go for a couple of minutes and then we'll start shaping.
what you want to do is you want to ensure that your oven is on its lowest heat setting, otherwise it's going to burn the leather. And then you start manipulating the leather. Quite a long process uh, but as you can see the leather is starting to retain its shape and as you keep on shaping it every time the water evaporates and the leather will actually stay in that form It's pretty close, but we're just going to try and set it a little bit more so it's a little bit more dry. So when we shape the, the upper piece that goes across the nose, it actually fits around uh, the same shape as the lower half. So when we glue it together, it's a lot, it's a lot better fit. So as you can see, leather's gotten a lot drier. You can see it's a little bit wet in there. Um, but it's to the point where I'm pretty happy with the shape and we can start working on the nose piece. So I'm just gonna do the initial shape and then rest it over the, the other piece. start the teeth as well.
Uh, as you can see, the, the bottom is pretty, pretty dry and pretty set. So it allows you to use it to adjust how it's going to come. So I want to be able to twist this nose slightly backwards, which means I have to bring these forward. And as you can see, it's starting to take shape already. And the same with the teeth. We just want to double check. shaping it so that it's going to be something that we can actually glue onto the mask itself without too much problems. So I'm pretty happy with the shaping of it. Now it's just a matter of letting it dry. So it's been cooking for about uh, 20 minutes. I'm pretty happy with it. And as you can see, it's keeping its shape, it's pretty hard, um, teeth work as well, uh, it's pretty warm, there we go, now we're going to wait for it to cool down and glue it together, well we'll glue the top part to the bottom half, uh, the teeth will paint uh, and then glue. Awesome. The next step is to mark where the glue is going to be. See it again because I'm going to be painting. It doesn't really matter if I have marks on the, on the leather. of choice is contact cement. 
And I use this for most of my leather. Even when you're making cheese. So now the glue is dried, I've left it about 10-15 minutes and it's tacky but it's not wet. So let's put it together. So I'm using the marks that I made previously as references. So, time to spray, and I'm just using normal matte black spray paint. You can get it at Home Depot. And what I'll do is I'll give it a couple of coats just to try and get an even spread. And let's see what it does. Still slightly wet, but you can see that the leather's actually retained the texture that you've added to it. Uh, I've tried to get all the, the edges. I try not to spray the inside of the mask uh, because that smell of the spray paint uh, sometimes is something that lingers and is not comfortable when you wear it. Um, but there we go. Next step will be to wait for this to completely dry and then start the paint job. All right, so we've done the base coat uh, and now we're gonna start layering different colors. Now the theme of the, the mask that I saw that I quite liked was red and gold. So I'm gonna do a, a bit of dry brushing with red and then we'll add uh, different details as we go. I'm using just straightforward acrylic paint. Uh, I think you can get these at Walmart for a dollar. Uh, it's really inexpensive. And what I'm doing is I'm loading the brush and then taking most of the paint off.
trying to do is just build up layers of paint. And by using this technique, you actually start to see the texture that we built into the leather beforehand. Red. And the same concept. So at first you want to go sparing.
So now I'm thinking of incorporating some gold into the mask itself. The teeth are going to be gold. It might just be a little bit too red. So, uh, uh, there we go. Touch the black paint. And what I'm thinking of doing is adding some, some gold to that section there. But let's see. Let's see if it will work. Worst case scenario is we just wipe it off. helped. So I've added contact cement. I've given it a good 10 minutes to dry and let's put it together. There we go. Mask complete. Um, I didn't think about it when I was making it, but it's it's the Iron Man Samurai Mask. 